Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to The Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. You know, I've had... We, really. We've had a lot of fun this week making jokes about Kevin McCarthy losing in the most humiliating fashion possible. Mm -hmm. But am I got to ask, at what point does it become sad <laughs> to watch him get repeatedly dragged through the town square while the village idiots pelt him with rotting garbage? <laughs> Not at this point, because this is still a lot of fun. <laughs> By now, it's really clear that every day McCarthy attempts to become speaker is just another unnecessary but enjoyable sequel, which is why we're covering all the lowlights in a segment we're calling Mamma Mia, Here He Lose Again. <laughs> Waterloo, run if a speaker you shouldn't do. Or don't, 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 don't. Let me catch you up. Let me catch you all up. On Tuesday, Tuesday, right? Because the Monday was the thing. On Tuesday, on Tuesday, Kevin McCarthy tried to get elected speaker, but he lost three times. But then on Wednesday, lost three more times. <laughs> you may be sensing a pattern. <laughs> After the second day of defeat, a desperate McCarthy offered the rebels anything and everything, including his balls and a little moleskin purse. <laughs> okay? There you go. A little latch, a little latch on top. He promised the Freedom Caucus two seats on the powerful House Rules Committee, guaranteed that one of the PACs that he's associated with would stay neutral in all future Republican primaries, and he gave in on the one thing he said he would never give in on, allowing a single lawmaker to force a snap vote at any time to oust him from the speakership. Wow, that is a really weak position to take in what is essentially a job interview. Uh... <laughs> My greatest strength, uh, probably that I'm so easy to fire. <laughs> Watch. Security. See you Monday. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> ooh, ooh, hey. After these concessions, McCarthy was feeling pretty hopeful that progress was being made incrementally toward his victory. As he told reporters, I crawl before I walk. I walk before I run. Oh, that reminds me of the ancient riddle. What walks on four legs in the mornings, two legs in the afternoon, and is never going to be Speaker of the House? <laughs> mm -hmm. Riddle me this! Uh, Oedipus. <laughs> anyway, Kevin shook off those first two days of losing three times, came into the chamber today with a pep in his step, and lost four more times. So far. So far. Why? Why? I don't understand. That, but that's the most since, like, 1859 or something like that, right? Wow. It beat the 1923 nine times in a row. Okay? Why does he keep going? I'm beginning to think losing floor votes might be his kink. <laughs> He's getting off on this. It's all in the new erotic congressional novel, Fifty Shades of Nay. <laughs> now, why else? That's upsetting. <laughs> why else would Kevin McCarthy keep doing this other than to make me happy? Because I cannot get enough of this. I don't know how the rest of y'all feel, but this is better than watching him lose an election. Yeah. This is... I mean... Please, please. Come on. Please. It's better than watching him lose an election because you get to watch him lose three times a day for apparently eternity. It's <laughs> fantastic. And I know that these are not the feelings that the Lord wants me to have about <laughs> anyone. I will grant you that. And the Lord is free to stop me. But until the Lord comes on a cloud of glory and tells me personally not to feel happy about Kevin McCarthy getting repeatedly nut-punched, <laughs> every day is Christmas for Stevie. Because, and I'll tell you why... I'll tell you why. <laughs> okay, here's... Because here's a guy, and let me explain, Lord. Here's a guy <laughs> who, right after January 6th, you will remember on the floor of the House that he wants to be the Speaker of, said that the President bore responsibility for that unprecedented murderous attack on the Capitol. And then two weeks later, he flies down to Mar-a-Lago to kiss the ring. And I don't mean... <laughs> And I don't mean this one. <laughs> he knew what he was doing was wrong, 
and he did it anyway for his personal political power. He made this calculation. I could do the right thing, or I could be speaker. <laughs> and now he gets neither. <laughs> Ten times in a row. Ten times. So far, so far, it profit a man nothing to gain the world but lose his soul, assuming he had a soul to begin with. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have to say on the subject. OK, I'll say a little more. <laughs> At this point, he is offered to give away so much power that the speaker job itself has no meaning. So what does he actually want? My guess, and this is kind of true, he's doing it for legacy, for his place in history, because, and this is a fact, the House of Representatives must acquire an oil portrait <laughs> of every speaker, or in John Boehner's case, a tasteful nude. <laughs> Maybe. He looks good. He looks really good. Now, maybe Kevin's just desperate for that oil portrait in the speaker's lobby. Well, to end this logjam, to save democracy, I have personally commissioned an oil painting of Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> Bring it out, boys. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Here's what we did. Here's what we did. And we absolutely did this. We went online to one of those AI art generators and we typed in the key words that we kept finding in news articles about this impasse. Kevin McCarthy, Speaker of the House, and chaos. This is what the AI generated. Voix loser. <laughs> Honest to God. That's amazing. I think, I think, <laughs> I think this truly captures Kevin's je ne sais. Ah! <laughs> Here's your portrait, Kevin. We'll send this to you, and you can hang it up in your office, wherever that ends up being. I'm guessing the corner booth at Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> After a couple of chocolate chip cookie skillets, you'll forget all this happened. And I do want to point out that based on this computer-generated portrait, when this is all over. Steve Carell's gonna win an Oscar for playing <laughs> Kevin McCarthy. Steve. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> this is real. Now, as fun as this was uh, for America to see, and as fun as all of this chaos is for America to have, this is also terrible for America. The House of Representatives cannot begin its business until there is a speaker. That means no one's sworn in, no one's being paid, no laws being passed, no money for office supplies. It has led the Washington Post to wonder, does the House even exist right now? Well, that's, that leads to a fascinating philosophical question. If Kevin McCarthy falls in the forest, isn't it fun to laugh at him? <laughs> <laughs> Republicans. Wow. Great. We gotta send that to him. We gotta send that to Kev. <laughs> Republicans are understandably trying to spin the inability to fulfill the most basic function of Congress. It's kind of a good thing. You described it as chaotic, and you can say that, but I, but I really think this is democracy in action. It's bad, it's uncomfortable, we don't like it, and obviously we want to get to business. But Jake? it's democracy. What looks chaotic and kind of seems counterproductive to many, it's actually in its own way refreshing. Oh. <laughs> Chaotic, counterproductive, and refreshing? That could only be the great taste of cluster munch cola. <laughs> Get some munch in your mouth. <laughs> cluster munch. All this dysfunction is leaving House members with a lot of time to kill. New members of the House can't be sworn in until a speaker is picked, which means all those families who came to get a proud photo op have now been camping out for days. It's gotten so bad that California Representative Jimmy Gomez had to make the Democratic cloakroom a baby-changing station. <laughs> and, and what gets cleaned up in there, Nancy Pelosi? The poo-poo. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Gomez. Gomez even tweeted this photo. Oh, my God! Make the baby the speaker. <laughs> His resume is just as real as George Santos. <laughs> but... <laughs> Dancing with that chicken. Dancing with that chicken. Dancing with that chicken. 
But the best had to be Representative Troy Nels from Texas, who was seen outside smoking a cigar. And when asked about it, he said, they're mild to moderate, which is good, because they won't make you <laughs> your pants. <laughs> we fact-checked that, and that is good. <laughs> of course, of course, it implies that he sometimes chooses a brand of cigar that intentionally <laughs> makes you crap your pants. You know, I've been smoking mild all week, but we're going on vacation now. Honey, pack my crapping pants. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Chris Wallace and the star of Women Talking, Jesse Buckley. And when we come back, meanwhile, join us on two.